In this video, we are going to look at solving a system of equations, uh, particularly two equations with two unknowns. And uh, this video is going to focus on the graphing method. There are a couple other methods, the substitution method and the elimination method, which I will cover in some other videos. So solving the system by graphing, um, here we have our system of two equations, basically means you're going to graph these two lines and you're going to find the point where they cross. I mean, that's the most basic way to say it. But I want to give a little more insight into exactly why that is the solution to the system of equations. And um, so let's start with this blue equation here, 2x plus y equals 9. And let's think about graphing that. Now, in order to be successful at that, you should have seen in your past, you know, something about maybe slope and y-intercept or plotting points. If you've never graphed lines before, you're going to want to go back and learn how to do that first. Um, I'm going to assume you have some knowledge of slope and y-intercept or plotting points. So, for example, if I want to find a solution to this equation right here, I need to find a value of x and a value of y that make this equation true, all right? So for example, if I let x equal 0, and I let y equal 9, and I plug those into the equation, if I put a 0 in for x and a 9 in for y, I get 2 times 0 plus 9 equals 9. That's true, all right? So that's a solution to this equation. Um, I could say, well, what if I let x equal 1? All right, well, if I let x equal 1, 2 times 1 is 2, plus y would have to be 7 to equal 9. So I get another solution. And there are infinitely many solutions to this equation. Now, when we're looking at a picture of these solutions, we graph the line, right? So this, this uh, Cartesian plane over here allows us to see a picture of all the solutions. So we represent the solution 0, 9 by the ordered pair 0, 9 and x equal 1, y equals 7 with this ordered pair. All right, so come over here. I graph this. The point 0, 9 would be here, and the point 1, 7 would be here. Now it only takes two points to determine a line, so I could connect those, and I'd have my uh, graph of my line. I could find another point if I wanted to just to make things a little nicer, or if I'm comfortable with slope and y-intercept, I see this is going down 2 over 1. I know this equation is linear because the x is to the first power and the y is to the first power. So it's going to go down 2 over 1 again, down 2 over 1 again, and I could get a whole bunch of points very quickly, which is going to help me draw a straighter line here. So I'll put a bunch of those in. Okay, and I'll connect these as straight as I can. Oh, that's pretty good. All right, so... By drawing that line, every single point on that line can be represented by some x and y value. Like this point down here is 7, x is 7, y is negative 5. So when x is 7 and y is negative 5, I get 9. Every single one of those points is a solution to this, to this equation right here. So when we're solving a system of equations, we're trying to find a solution that works in both equations. All right, so let's go to the red equation, and let's look at the solutions to that equation. In other words, let's graph the line, because the graph of the line gives us all the solutions. And we'll see if they have a solution in common. In other words, an x and a y value that makes both equations true. All right, well, let's see. This one, we could put it in slope-intercept form, although... I'm going to have to divide by 3, and that's going to give me a weird y-intercept. So maybe I'll see if I can come up with a couple points. It's always uh, nice to choose 0 and see if 0 works. So if x is 0, uh, y is going to be a fraction. If y is 0, x could be 8. That, might, that sounds good, right? 8 minus 0 is 8. So if x is 8 and y is 0, all right, that's a solution. Um... Let's see, could we come up with another one that maybe is nice and doesn't have fractions? Well, whatever I put here for x, I'm going to have to subtract it over and then divide by 3. So it would be nice if after I subtract it, it's divisible by 3. What if I let x be 2? Because if I subtract 2 from 8, I'll get 6. Let me show you what I mean. So let's say I let x be 2. Now I'm going to plug 2 in for x. So I'll put a 2 where the x is. And 
if I'm not sure what y would be, I can just solve it. Okay, so I'll subtract 2 from both sides. This is what I was kind of doing in my head to look ahead and see if I could find a nice number. I knew by subtracting 2 I'd get 6, and then I could divide by negative 3, and that gives me negative 2. I was trying to get a number here that was divisible by 3. All right, so I get that. All right, let's graph these points. 8, 0, over 8, up 0, over 2, down 2, and I could connect those. That looks like it's going up 1 over 3, up 1 over 3, because it's going up 2 over 6. So it has a slope of 2 over 6, which reduces to 1 third. And the only reason I'm doing that is so I can get a few more points just to help me draw a straight line because I don't have a ruler here. All right, so if we connect these, and you can see where these lines are going to cross, right? Right here is where they cross. Let's go and make this black. All right, so the this point right here, which is the point over 5 and down 1, appears to be the value of x and the value of y that make both these true. Let's go check it out. Let's go check it up here. Check. Okay, so I'm going to put 5 in for x and negative 1 in for y and see if it works. So 2 times 5, put that in for x, plus negative 1 in for y, does that equal 9? Sure. Check. All right, great. Now let's put uh, in the other equation, let's put a 5 in for x and a negative 1 in for y. Does that equal 8? So we've got 5, and then we have negative 3 times negative 1. That's positive 3. That works. That's 8. Boom. Okay, so that is the only value of x and y that make both these equations true. And you can see that from the graph. Now I'm going to tell you, the more you start working with systems of equations, you're not going to use graphing a lot to solve it because it's kind of tedious. And, you know, it, it's great if the solution is 5, negative 1. But what if the solution to a system was a fraction? That's going to be really hard to tell what the solution is just by looking at the graph. So we usually start systems of equations by looking at the graph to really help you understand what it means for something to be a solution to the system. All these red points are solutions of the red equation. All these blue points are solutions of the blue equation. There's only one point on this graph that is on both the red line and the blue line. That makes it the solution to the system of equations. All right, so let's just try one more for practice. Okay. If you want to pause the video and try this one on your own, you could do that. Um, and I will work through it here. So this first equation, uh, I put this one in slope-intercept form already just to practice. So on this equation right here, um, the slope, which we denote with the variable m, is 1 because there's a 1 in front of the x. And the y-intercept is right here at 7. So it's going to go through the point 0, 7. All right, so to plot that, I'm going to go up to 7, and then I'm going to go up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1. And I can go this other way too. All right, so I get this line. Now, you didn't have to use slope and y-intercept to graph it. I just thought it'd be a good review of slope and y-intercept. I don't really know where these lines are going to cross, so I'm going to extend this out because I want to make sure my lines are going to cross. Um, and if you don't extend it far enough, you can always go back and extend it later. So, you know, you could have picked points too, like if x is 0, y is 7. If x is 1... You get y is 8, that would be this point. If x is 2, y is 9. So, you know, this would have been an easy one to choose points as well. Always good to practice slope and y-intercept, though. Okay, so I'll practice slope and y-intercept on this other, on the red one. So to put this in slope-intercept form, I'm just going to minus 1 half x from both sides. So that's going to give me y equals negative 1 half x plus 1. All right, so my slope is negative 1 half, and my y-intercept is 0, 1. So I'm going to start at 0, 1, and I'm going to go down 1 over 2, down 1 over 2, down 1 over 2, and I can also go up 1 left 2, up 1 left 
two. It looks like they're going to cross right there. Up one, left two. And draw my line. I'll stop there. It's pretty straight. Okay, so it looks like they cross at the point negative 4, positive 3. Negative, is that negative 4, positive 3? Yep. And so it's always good to check. So we could put in x is negative 4 and y is positive 3 and make sure it works. So if we put it in the blue equation, we get y is 3, x is negative 4, plus 3. Yep, that's true. All right, let's check the red equation. And let's see, 1 half times x, which we're checking negative 4 is x, plus y, which is 3. Does that equal 1? Let's see, half of negative 4 is negative 2 plus 3. Yep, that equals 1. All right, so I'm confident my answer is right. It's always good to check, just in case you made a little mistake with your graphing. Um, you know, if you make a little mistake with your graphing, you could get your lines could still cross and you'll think you have the right answer uh, but if you go back and check it and it doesn't work in both equations then you know you made a little mistake with your graphing and you want to go find it all right so i hope that helps you get started on solving systems of equations